All right, so we've shown you all the components of a computer, planned one out. Now let's go ahead and take one apart so you guys can see how they all come together. And if you're planning on upgrading a current computer, this may help you with taking out those old components so you can switch them out. Hey, what's up everybody? Dimitri of the Caddy Gaming Channel here. And this is actually my second time recording this video. First one came out super overexposed and the build video got corrupted. So I'm doing this a second time. You may end up seeing some clips from the original because I ended up actually leaving this computer to get really dusty and I left all the cables to be really messy so that I could show you how to clean all that kind of stuff. And we will go over that still, um, but we are re-recording. So everything in here looks much cleaner than it did before and we're still gonna get it done. We're gonna take this computer apart all the way uh, all the way down to the bare motherboard and then next week I will be doing a video on building the computer and putting it back together. Now there are some things that will be handy when taking apart a computer or building one. A organizational tray is super helpful for all of the different types of screws. If you're unfamiliar with what the screws look like this is a really easy way to organize them and make sure that you don't mix them up. Uh, this one's just one I 3D printed. Super simple. Uh, it's got uh, like 12 compartments in there and pretty helpful. Obviously some screwdrivers are pretty helpful. This is one that actually came with one of my coolers. It's got a magnetic tip which is super helpful uh, when getting to some of the motherboard screws for example. Um, magnetic tip ones are great so try to get one of these and this is just a little stubby one in case I have to get to something that is in a tighter space. I also have this precision bit set. You don't really need this for most things. Um, the M.2 drive screws are usually the smallest ones and they're, they're pretty small, but if you do have a screwdriver with exchangeable bits, you should have one that's small enough to do the uh, M.2, but I have this one just in case. A can of dust off or compressed air super helpful when dusting things off I use these quite a bit um, I have I buy the packs of them from Costco but I also have an electric duster which I purchased this summer it's been fantastic I used it to clean my computers out every other month or so um, and I use it to dust the rest of the basement here I am in an unfinished basement so it does get pretty dusty um, but this thing is awesome So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take both of the panels off, make things a little bit easier on me. Now this computer case actually has a fan on the side panel here, so you have to be very careful when you take it off. You have to disconnect that fan from the motherboard um, before taking the panel away. Whenever you're unplugging something from the motherboard, try to make sure that you um, pull from the connector and not on the wire. You don't want to damage any of your connectors and that's a really easy way to do so. All right, so one of the easiest things to get rid of first is the graphics card. It is usually the most bulky um, component in the system that usually blocks you from getting to other things and it's pretty simple to get rid of. So if you just go ahead and take off this connector, all of the power connectors for the power supply are gonna have this little clip on it um, so make sure that you hold the back end of that clip to release it and then slide it off of the connector. These screws on the side are thumb screws, but usually they're tightened down a little bit with a screwdriver first. So you can go ahead and use your screwdriver to loosen them. And 
and then you can just finish them off with your thumbs. So now the GPU has a little clip down here for the PCIe uh, connection. So what you want to do is you want to open that. So you want to move it towards the right by pushing it down. And when it's in the open position, you can go ahead and lift the GPU out. Sometimes when pulling it out, your GPU may get caught if it's slid under one of these other thumb screws. So just give it a slight little movement with your thumbs and you should be able to get it out there, no problem. You shouldn't have to yank it out. So if you feel like you're yanking, um, make sure that you have that clip open and that these two screws are undone. Depending on the size of your graphics card, it could be a single slot, it could be a dual slot, it could be a triple slot. So make sure you understand how big the back plate of your graphics card is and you're gonna have to undo the amount of screws required. Now, while we're here, we can get rid of my two capture cards. Similar process for both of them. Open up that clip and slide it out. So interesting thing about these capture cards is just the absolute size difference between the original and the MK2. It is quite literally like a quarter of the size, it's pretty small. It has been an absolute upgrade and I'm really looking forward to the new ones they're, they're going to bring out for the new consoles because they're the new consoles do 4K 120. So there should be new ones coming out soon. All right, so next up we can disconnect our SATA connections, both from the motherboard and the power supply. So these are the two SSDs here. Um, actually, one of them is an SSD and one of them is a hybrid drive. And we can disconnect them from the motherboard here as well. So the SATA clips have a little metal clip on the top. So you can click that down to release them and pull them out. Again, you shouldn't have to yank hard on anything. Um, as soon as you release that clip, it should come up pretty easily. While we're at it, we can get rid of the IO, front IO here. So you can, my motherboard actually has a large connector that allows me to pre-connect all of the front IO and then connect this one big piece to the motherboard. But some of them will be separated like that if you don't have that. And you can just pull these off there, no problem. Again, try to pull them from the connectors and not the wire. This is the USB 3 connector. Um, it is usually a little bit more difficult to get out. Just make sure that you uh, give it a little bit of a wiggle when you're pulling it out. It usually helps me. Um, but it is the one that feels the, the roughest trying to pull out. Like so. And our HD audio as well. Now, the 24 pin connector for the motherboard is often the most snug connector on the motherboard. So be very careful when you're pulling it out, make sure to release that clip. And I usually go and put my fingers down on the RAM sticks here just to keep the motherboard from flexing too much. And again, just a couple wiggles and it comes off. If you have any other fan cables connected to the motherboard, make sure to disconnect those now as well. And you can go ahead and do your CPU connector up at the top here. Same thing as the 24 pin. So my 24 pin CPU connector there is getting blocked a little bit by this fan. So we're gonna take this fan off first and then we will take off the CPU connector. So my case has these rubber little grommets here 
to help dampen noise. I over tightened a couple of them once and they kind of tear themselves apart, but just be gentle with them. And now we just, oops, disconnect that from my little fan hub. I have a fan hub back here. Um, if you don't have one, you would just be disconnecting it from the motherboard. Um, but yeah, just disconnect it from there. Now we can get to that CPU connector. Disconnected. And while we're at it, we can disconnect our hard drives here. So the hard drive is going to be the same way as the SSDs. And if you have any cable ties here holding a bunch of stuff together, now is probably a good time to release that so that you can get those extra cables out of the way. And we can take those SATA cables out. If you want a closer look at what the ends of those seal cables look like, this is how they are. So that metal little clip, you just push it in really gentle like that and they should disconnect pretty easily. This is usually the failure point on these as well. Um, when that stops getting having spring, these cables really easily slide out. So just be careful for that. We're gonna push our power supply cables through just so that they're not hanging around the back here. Don't want anything to be pinched when I lean this back down. All right, so now we can take the power supply out. So you should have four screws on the back end here. And if your power supply is modular, if you find it would be easier, you can disconnect all of these connections before pulling it out. Which in my case, it seems to have gotten caught on something.
Now, removal of your drives is gonna be dependent on your case. My case here, for example, has quick release um, hard drive bays and SSD bays. My hybrid drive is held in with one screw. My SSD, I don't have it held in with anything. Because SSDs don't have any mechanical movement parts, I didn't really worry about trying to find a screw for it. So that was just easy to take out. My hard drives are very easy to take out in this case because they have a quick release system. So you just release the clip and you push it out from the rear. Now be a lot more careful when you're handling your hard drives. They are mechanical, so don't drop it. Don't throw it. Uh, just be gentle. And for this little hybrid drive, it's just a singular screw. Very, very small screw, so make sure you don't lose that one. Uh, this is where the magnetic screwdriver comes in handy. And I could just slide that one out as well. So the last thing we want to remove is our motherboard. You're going to have a bunch of screw holes around your motherboard. Um, and they will actually usually be circled by the PCB. So make sure you remove all of those and then you can easily slide your motherboard out of your case. Now we're gonna take the motherboard out of the case here. Just very gently lift off of those screws and pull it out. So for components that don't have anything exposed or something that will catch onto fibers, nice little Swiffer duster or something of the like is a really good way to just get rid of all that surface dust. It will aerate that dust, so make sure you're in a well-circulated space so you're not just breathing in all your dust. And my fan is actually pretty clean because I have a filter on the bottom of the case, so it held out pretty well. Um, there is a little bit of dust here, so we'll just brush that off. And now to get a little bit cleaner, you can use something like an air canister um really good way to clean out some air if you feel like you go through these a lot you can get something like what i have here which is an e-duster so this is basically just a never-ending can of compressed air it's really great it is very loud however um, but it is great for doing you know full clean outs and I use this once a month and I clean out both computers. For now, we'll just use the compressed air. Make sure that you do not um, hold your canned air at an angle at any time. You want it to be completely straight. 
If you hold it at any kind of angle, you risk having it shoot out condensation and you don't want that on any of your components. So short bursts, you can see a lot of dust just came out of there. and nice and clean. If you're taking apart a computer, it's a good idea to just clean all of the components off. Um, you don't wanna be putting something together that's dirty. So highly recommended, especially things like fans and even more so fans that are on a radiator because they really don't get a lot of space. And you can see like there's a lot of dust building up on that fan. If I hit this with the air canister, there's gonna be a lot of dust flying up here. And as you can see, some of the dust still sits over here. So if you wanna get even more deep into that, you can use some Q-tips and you can clean out all that extra dust. Now, a good spot to put the motherboard is actually back on its box. You don't want to be putting the motherboard onto the anti-static bag because those bags are designed to have the static on the outside of the bag. So if you put the motherboard on it, you're going to be exposing it to possible static. Speaking of static, when you're building or taking apart your computer or doing anything around there, um, try not to be on carpet. If you do have to be on carpet, uh, try to wear some kind of shoes or slippers. Um, more more so a sandal than a slipper you don't want to be creating any extra possible static if you have an anti-static band um, not a live strong band but an actual anti-static band it's always helpful to to wear you can also plug your power supply into the wall have it powered off but you can touch your power supply and that will ground you as well so you can do that as another alternative But all right, let's quickly, we're gonna take out our RAM. So you're gonna undo these clips at the top here and you should just be able to pull your RAM out like so. Do not yank. Uh, if you feel like you have to yank, make sure that clip is open and just gently with two, two hands, pull it out. Now we'll take the M.2 off here. I have another M.2 underneath this heat sink, but we'll just take off the one for now. And typically an M.2, when released from its screw, will pop out. Um, this one has a heat sink on it, however, so it is a little bit heavier, but very gently slide it out of that socket. And last but not least is our cooler. So this is all gonna be dependent on which cooler you have, whether you have the stock cooler uh, or an aftermarket cooler. Just follow the instructions in reverse. So with these Cooler Master Evo 212 here, it's just remove this fan. I have no nails, that's a little difficult right now. and make sure to unplug it from the motherboard. And now we will undo these screws. And 
you can just give your cooler a slight twist and pull at the same time and you should be able sometimes it'll have a little bit of suction depending on how fresh your um, thermal paste is i just put on the thermal paste yesterday because i had filmed this video yesterday so it is quite fresh um there we go um we can clean off the top of the cpu and the top of the cooler just grab some paper towel and having 99 percent rubbing alcohol is extremely helpful in this case You can wipe off the excess with a dry paper towel. And then using some 99% alcohol. Dab a little bit on the paper towel. And you can clean off the rest here. And there you go. Your CPU is pretty clean. You might have some thermal paste around the outside. You can easily clean that off pretty easily when it's out of the socket. Uh, when it's inside the socket, maybe a little bit more difficult. But that's pretty clean. And now to remove it, you just go ahead and see this little metal lever. You push it outwards and lift it up. And you can take your CPU out. Now, be very careful with your CPU. If you have an AMD CPU, it will have pins on the bottom. And these pins, oops. It'll have pins on the bottom. And these pins are what connect it to the motherboard. So with an AMD CPU, be very careful with these pins. You don't wanna bend them, because if you bend them, it will not properly socket back into the motherboard. Be very careful. If you have to put this down, put it with the IHS on the table um, or put it back into the clamshell that it came with. If you have an Intel, um, the motherboard has the pins, so be careful with the motherboard. And that's it for taking apart your computer. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you are taking components out, I do highly suggest you clean them uh, with a duster, a can of compressed air or an e-duster, very good idea. Um, I try to clean my computer once every two months or so. Um, I don't fully take it apart, but I do get in there and I dust. I take some of the components out, like the graphics card, um, to be able to dust a little bit more easily. If you are planning on selling your motherboard, for example, make sure to take the I.O. shield out the back and include that with the motherboard. You don't want to be giving anybody a motherboard without an I.O. shield. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or go ahead and join our Discord. Myself, along with many others in there, have been building and rebuilding computers for a while. So if you get stuck with anything or you have any questions, we're more than happy to help. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and come say hello. If you have any questions that you'd like me to ask there, you can go ahead and throw them in the chat and I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. As I mentioned, next week I will be doing a video on building the computer, so feel free to subscribe to be notified of when that comes out. Thanks again for watching to the end of the video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.